Hey guys, it's Alicia back. So uh, today I just wanted to provide you with my day 37 update. Uh, I am in my comfies today. I had uh, a little bit of a rough day yesterday with side effects and insomnia, but that's okay. I have good news around that, which I'll share with you briefly. So just wanted to share been a while since I posted but that's because I've just been taking meds and waiting for the appointment I had yesterday so yesterday I went in for cycle monitoring on day 36 and this time we were doing ultrasound only and the the objective or the goal that we were looking for was a endometrin lining so a uterine, a uterine lining of seven millimeters or higher and uh, I was a little apprehensive since we, if you've watched my other videos, you know that we kind of had, well, a few speed bumps in other cycles and another speed bump in this cycle. So I was a little bit apprehensive for the results, but I got them straight away from the technician. She actually measured me twice because my results were so good. So I had a uterine lining of nine millimeters. So exciting news there what that means is uh i definitely have i have a little bit of a different medication uh regime uh i've started today which i will share with you but also what that means is in just five days we're doing our transfer it's happening and i'm so happy uh and I, very interestingly with the speed bump we had earlier uh, it, it, it appeared as though we were going to sort of go past that six week standard, uh, that it, which of course is, a, is an approximation, but guess what? Our transfer is on going to be on December 17th, which is literally exactly the six week mark on day 42. So we're really excited and yeah, so Yesterday was my last Lupron injection. Hallelujah, because as you all know, if you've been watching my other videos, for me personally with Lupron, I would say my 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 biggest, biggest problem with Lupron is the uh, uh, insomnia and like the difficulty sleeping like and like the weird dreams and stuff. So yesterday, that was it. I'm done Lupron. I'm so happy about that. So, and just for folks who are like wanting to maybe do a comparative on their cycles or are considering a frozen embryo transfer. Uh, so what ended up happening, I was on, I took Lupron for a total of 28 days. So I just throw that out there because I know this whole process is complicated and of course it continually evolves in terms of how our bodies are responding to hormones. And to be real honest, when I was handed my first vial of Lupron, I I thought it might I might be on it for like a week. I thought I might be on it for maybe two weeks. But now nah, I was on it for 28 days. That's me personally, just so you all know how things kind of went for me. So starting today, I have a little bit of a new regimen. So things I'm going to continue will be the baby aspirin, which I take at eight o'clock every morning, 81 milligrams. And I'm going to continue the Estrace tablets. I'm currently taking uh, eight milligrams a day. So I do two tablets in the morning at eight o'clock and two tablets in the evening at eight o'clock. And I am now adding, this is the addition, I'm adding endometrin so I'm taking 300 milligrams a day on a very specific schedule so that schedule is I, uh, I take one tablet at 6 a.m. one tablet at 2 p.m. and one tablet at 10 p.m. so that's my medication situation at, for situation for now um, I just want to say the this may be uh, TMI for some people, but I'm here to just be really real about the process. So uh, if, if you don't really want to hear anything TMI, feel free to, you know, skip along to, to another video. 
but I'm just gonna share with you folks. So when I say I'm taking the esterase and the endometrin, what I mean is I am not taking that orally, I am taking that vaginally. And to be very, very honest, I have had days where I would very much prefer to give myself an injection than to take medication that way. Um, it's just, here's an example. Last So today is Wednesday. Last Sunday, my husband and I went to a family event to celebrate his mother's, uh, my mother-in-law's birthday. And it, it's a little bit of a travel, like a two hour drive to get there. Now we had to, and, and then a two hour drive to get home. So we had to be so calculated on when we left um, the, their house because I had to do an injection at 6.30 and I also then had to take my estrace vaginally at 8 p.m., but it's a two hour drive. And this drive is not, like it's a country drive. So there's not often a place to pull over and find a restroom for privacy in regards to the estrace. So what we did is we planned our time that we left so that we would be home in home in time for the estrace. And but here's the thing with the injection, do you know what we did? All we did was pull over on the side of the road, popped on a light in the car, and I, you know, prepared and did my injection in the car. So in that way, injections are so much easier to maintain. Um, so in turn, we do a lot of traveling and like, I'm just going to have to be a little bit resourceful on finding ways to take my medications. Because again, just to be clear in terms of medications that I need to be able to administer vaginally, uh, and, and these medications, so the estrace and the endometrin, I'm on them now. And if things go well with transfer, I will remain on them until I am 12 weeks gestation. So I need to figure out a solution. And when I do, I'll share it with you folks. But here's my schedule. Eight, sorry, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. endometrin. 8 a.m. estrace. 2 p.m. endometrin. 8 p.m. estrace, 10 p.m. endometrin. So I def I need to be in a private vicinity at all of those times in the day. And that can be a little bit difficult. And again, it's not me complaining. I'm going to be resourceful and I'm in a, you know, an especially unique situation where, you know, I'm a little business and I work for home from home at the moment uh, while we're doing fertility treat, treatments, which is fantastic. That gives me a little bit more freedom. But even, you know, going out to source materials and product and make deliveries, like I need to be planned out around that. And so when I come up with a solution, uh, I'll definitely share. But for now, I'm kind of winging it. <laughs> so that's my update for today. Uh, in just three days on Saturday, we're doing our matrix test in downtown Toronto. We'll be doing that and we'll have results within 24 hours. So when I have those results to share with you folks, I will definitely post a video and share my journey. I, uh, I, I'm not worried to be really honest. Uh, since my lining was, was two millimeters, two millimeters doesn't sound like a lot, but in the scheme of uterine it, it's significant. So because they were looking for seven and my lining measured nine, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the matrix test. Regardless, I still want to do that test. We have only three frozen embryos and we definitely want to see success from that. So it's definitely worthwhile to have that additional evaluation for us. Um, and also, so I'm in Canada but just to be clear around the cost of Matrix test, it's like so worth it. It's $350. And 
for any of you who are currently doing IVF or FET or even IUI, you know like a vial of medication can cost that much. So for us, it's very worth it and we're moving forward. So definitely going to share those results with you when I have them. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, uh, but yeah, so transfer date is this coming Monday. It's five days away on the 17th. I'll definitely uh, touch base uh, after that. And then we're into our two week wait. So looking forward to all of it. Anyhow, just wanted to share this, this step of my journey with you folks. And as always, if you have, you know, some personal experience, if you have questions, please feel free to comment below. Uh, as you all know, I'm sharing this journey because it's so important to create a sense of community um, and for us to just share information. And, you know, like I always say, it's fantastic that, you know, we're fortunate enough to have you know, loving family members and loved ones and friends around us to support us in our journeys. But we're, we're the, we're the ladies walking in these shoes and fellows too. Uh, it's an, it's an emotional journey for the men as well, I think. So, you know, let's just connect where, wherever we can support each other. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope to be back with good news in just a few days. So y'all keep well.